All right, good evening. And uh, again, uh, my apologies and uh, thank you for your patience uh, uh, to the delegations. Uh, I'd like to call our meeting to order and uh, all members of the um, quarter revision are present uh, to the board members, any disclosure of uh, pecuniary interest on the agenda as presented to you this evening. Hearing none, we'll have that duly uh, recorded. Uh, the introduction purpose of our meeting this evening uh, is to hear from affected owner who wishes to appeal his or her assessment or any part thereof as set out in the drainage report to the McLean Hergott drain prepared by uh, Gerard Rood, uh, professional engineer, uh, dated March 17, 2021, and the drainage report for the sear drain prepared by Mark uh, Hernandez, a professional engineer, and that was dated in June 11th, uh, 2021. I will call upon a drainage superintendent uh, um, to um, drainage, yeah, to summarize the SEER report and provide up, up, updates. And I also will call upon a drainage superintendent uh, and the drainage engineer to summarize the McLean Hergott drain uh, report uh, and provide any updates. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Paglia. Oh, you're muted. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. And uh, through you, your worship, uh, the sear drain report, uh, there was some correspondence from a landowner who lives um, uh, out of country um, regarding a, uh, when the invoices would be um, sent out. So we received a phone call there and we received correspondence uh, from our delegates today on the CYR and we're available for questions afterwards. Uh, regarding the uh, McLean Hergott, we have not heard from any landowners. Everyone is on board for that one, your worship. Okay, so we'll keep that one in abeyance at the end for the, for the end of the meeting for uh, uh, resolution. Uh, so we'll, um, so we're dealing with the SEER uh, report uh, at the moment and we do have uh, delegations here. Uh, and uh, we have uh, Rick McDonald and uh, and Barbara Bigger. Yeah. Yes. I see Rick. Yeah. No, my wife. I'm here. <laughs> Camera shy. <clears throat> All right. Okay. So the floor is yours, uh, Rick. Go ahead with you. Oh, okay. I didn't think I was going to be allowed to speak tonight. Uh, um, the, uh, we back onto this drain, uh, uh, which was a sear drain, which was many years ago, went and expanded downwards the railroad tracks towards 42. Uh, the subdivisions have all been built around down here, and we're the third last house where the drain has been, we're the end of the drain. And uh, this particular drain back in the 90s, uh, uh, the township sandwich south was trying to uh, uh, spend a couple hundred thousand bucks in cleaning this drain out. And we at that time fought it. Uh, drainage uh, uh, rules and regulations were all in place then. And, uh, and uh, anyways, we came to the the uh, conclusion that, uh, or at least the town came to the conclusion, the sandwich so that we could clean out the part at the end uh, where the St. Louis Plaza is, and that would uh, uh, solve the problems of uh, water flowing into what back then was a Valenti uh, um, subdivision going in across uh, 22 at, at the time. Now, the um, this particular drain, my section, and the two houses to the south of us, uh, we, we don't have a drain. We don't have a ditch. We don't have water in this ditch. Even with all the water that we've had this past year, there wasn't water in our part of the ditch. And uh, this past spring, I went down and walked the whole uh, drain right down to the uh, St. Louis Plaza. And uh, I was surprised to see the water at the end by St. St. Louis it was pretty full, but when I went to the other side where the outlet was on the plaza to the drain 
run along County Road 22, there was no water coming out anywhere. So what I've done in my presentation to uh, tonight is I did some photos and showing that there's a trickle right now of water coming down that drain to the St. Louis Plaza. It's flowing cleanly. It's flown well, even though the drain looks clogged up, it's doing its job. And uh, the, uh, if you can see the, um, well, the pictures that are up right now uh, shows you uh, the bottom picture three is the drain just past uh, uh, our drains, the three people at the end, and it's closed, the subdivision's there. And the number two photo uh, shows, uh, the water we had in our property at the time from the rain this past spring, and uh, but there was no water in the ditch, which is that number one photo uh, in that ditch. Uh, it's really there's no ditch there, there's no drain there. And if you go to the end, of, you can see the houses in the background. Well, that's where everything ends. And, anyways, we um, uh, when I went back down and took the uh, looked at the drain on the other side of Connie Road 42 uh, or 22, I should say. Um, there was no water coming out and yet the drain was full before the plaza, but nothing coming out after the plaza. Now I've seen that they've done a little bit of excavation to the first uh, uh, culvert uh, coming off the St. Louis Plaza going east towards the main road, but nothing's been done past the first culvert and whether there's, and, and the water seems to be flowing uh, easily down there. Uh, but if you take a picture number six, um, that just shows you the trickle of water coming through this drain. And this has been probably one of the wettest summers I've seen. And uh, that water is flowing cleanly and it's flowing smoothly. And uh, even though there's trees in this ditch further down, uh, it's not uh, causing any problems with the water flow. Now, if you take a look at the uh, uh, last set of pictures I had, um, number seven shows you the actual culvert, the way it is today. Uh, it's loaded with debris and that. And I just think the public work should be down there cleaning that culvert out at the beginning. Now this is just south of the St. Louis Plaza. That culvert leads underneath the plaza and goes all the way over to the uh, uh, to the end to the side of the plaza uh, on the north side, and then flows into the drain that runs even with uh, County Road 22 to Manning Road. Now that. Um, Culvert, as you can see, I've circled it and shown you, you can hardly see it. But when that thing was completely full in the springtime, there was nothing coming out of the culvert in uh, picture number eight, uh, which leads to the uh, flow of water down parallel to County Road 22. Now, uh, one of the other things that I'm looking at, the public works, I think, could do something with this and uh, without having to spend a great amount of money to clean out a drain that really doesn't get a lot of water in it, except in the springtime. I was shocked to see how much water it had in springtime at the far end, but at our end, we had no water. Um, but when I drive down County Route uh, 42, uh, down by uh, uh, 8667 uh, County Route 42, that water's been there all year, and the stagnation of it uh, and the, the algae on it shows you there's been no water movement. If you take a look at the uh, ditch that that water is supposed to run down and go down east, a culvert or two, that's where the clog up is. But that should all be cleaned out and that water should be flowing freely. And again, this has nothing to do with the so-called sear drain. But I, I believe there's only 20 houses on this ditch and it's not really a drain anymore. And uh, I'd like to be, uh, I'd like to see any decisions on this drain kind of held up and get back to real in-person meetings and uh, uh, not doing it the way we're doing it now. Any got any questions that I can answer? 
Mr. Hernandez, uh, you know, can you uh, any response to uh, Mr. McDonald's uh, comments? Uh, yes, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I, I just wanted to clarify that the uh, the report that I've submitted is a Section 76 report, which is really only focused on the reassessment for the drain. And so the, the review of the necessary improvements um, have not been undertaken as part of this work. That's something that um, Mr. Paglia has been looking at, and I can certainly hand that over, over to him. Um, what our report really does is give the municipality the tools to be able to assess the costs based on the current land ownership um, that's out there today because the schedules that the municipality had were not current. Um, so we've provided the updated um, watershed areas, ownership, um, accounted for recent apportionments, um, changes to uh, land grading and, and so on. So that, that's what we've provided and that's what's before um, everybody this evening. Um, and uh, as far as the, the maintenance um, requirements, I would, I would hand that over to Mr. Paglia. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Mr. Paglia. Thank you, um, uh, Your Worship, through you. Uh, thanks, Mark, for that. Just a, another couple points of clarification, Mr. McDonald. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. On your submission today, you mentioned uh, 1794 Les France as one of the three properties at the end of uh, the Sear drain. I think you meant 1786. So just a clarification there. 1794's water goes to the Tecumseh outlet on, or sorry, the Las Bronze Road uh, drain, which happens to be called oh. Tecumseh outlet. Okay, and then another point of clarification, just to say that, uh, to reiterate what Mark said, pictures number nine and 10 uh, can be retracted from at least this, this discussion as they deal with County Road 42 project, which uh, has, council has appointed uh, Dylan Consulting as well through the County of Essex uh, and the, those issues can be worked out through that drainage process at the time when that time comes. So I'd like to ask, uh, first of all, thank you for your for your submission uh, and, and for your analysis of the drainage for the CYR drain. Unfortunately, uh, it is a community project, okay? So there is a defined watershed that uses the drain. It's not uh, defined by us, it's defined by qualified drainage practitioners. Uh, and just to give a little bit of background, the Sear drain was petitioned in 1969 by Frank Sear. A, a watershed boundary was formed and the Sear drain was constructed. 1992, there are two submissions for uh, the Sear drain, one, uh, dated, uh, I believe, April the 3rd of 1992, and that was a considered report by Lou Zarlenga. And then uh, through discussions, I would imagine, at council at a public meeting, the landowners requested that, uh, as, as Mr. McDonald mentioned, requested that the top end or from station zero to 568, which is at County Road 22, uh, not be maintained. And for whatever reason, council agreed with that and, there, and the, the report was significantly reduced and, and consequently reconsidered. Uh, April 8th is the date of that report that was reconsidered. And so they did work along County Road 22 for the MTO and for the county uh, at uh, Manning Road. So the total of that project was $43,000 and it was assessed to all upstream landowners. So, um, the idea, I think there's an educational component here about municipal drains and how they work. So they are, they are legal entities given to the landowners through the municipality by the province. So they're statute outlet for stormwater, uh, no different than a pipe under a road, for example. So uh, it gives landowners a statute connection for their stormwater. It is not the responsibility of the drainage act to get your water there. Uh, but it is designed for uh, a certain volume that comes from your land. And if I could add, uh, uh, I think, Sean, I think I'd, I sent you a LIDAR image just for everyone's uh, information. If we can display that image now, Sean. A LIDAR image is taken by, uh, uh, we, we buy the layer from the County of Essex. And basically it's a LIDAR image taken from an aircraft. Uh, that shoots a beam of light, I guess, and, and it gives you a color uh, color optics of the elevation. So uh, 1778 in the almost mid left, 
is Mr. McDonald's address and the two properties going south would be one is missing the address and then it's 1790. The one that's missing is 1786. Um, you can tell, so on, the, on, this, on this image, you can see that the uh, white where the houses are, are higher and then goes to sort of like a brown and then a red, an orange, a yellow, a, a green, and then a lighter green you can see in some of the cross sections there. So this, this image is one of the tools that engineers use to define the watershed. So uh, to, to abandon that last portion of the sear drain, uh, again, it is council's decision. Uh, we talked about that at the consideration meeting and there is a process to follow for that. It is highly unlikely and not, it would not be recommended to abandon that because uh, the town holds the responsibility and the liability to maintain uh, statute drainage for landowners. And that's just not in, in our town, that's right across the province. So highly unlikely that a town would uh, abandon a municipal drain because it is a statute outlet. Um, and hypothetically, and just to satisfy uh, maybe Mr. McDonald's um, uh, comment about abandoning that portion, um, if we hypothetically abandon that portion of drain, your water would still make its way to the CYR drain. So you would still be assessed. So the engineer's report from 1992 is what we are going to restore the drain to, uh, and it will be restored right to the south property line of 1790. Um, the submission today also had some other topics. I can touch on them now. And, 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 and Mr. McDonald, feel free to interrupt me uh, through, through uh, Mr. Mayor to, to ask questions. Uh, one of the issues or the questions was that uh, the town appoint our own qualified engineers to write these reports. Um, we cannot do that simply because OMAFRA, who, who holds the Drainage Act, uh, approves drainage practitioners across Ontario. Uh, and doesn't permit that. So, uh, Sean, if you want to pick up uh, or display, sorry, picture number one. Picture number one, as a drainage superintendent, to me clearly shows that maintenance is required. And that's what I get from that picture. Um, as a landowner, I, I get it. You, you, you're saying everything's fine. At the end of the day, it's gonna cost you money, uh, but it is the town's responsibility at the request of any landowner in the watershed to maintain and repair the drains. So we have an engineer's report that tells us what that drain is supposed to look like. And it's our obligation to return that uh, cross section to the designed cross section. So, to me, looking at that picture, I see a totally different story than you. I see a drain that is in badly, badly needed repair. So, uh, the age of that drain as it sits today is over 53 years old. So, that's what happens in 53 years of, of uh, you know, not maintaining it. So, the level of service, uh, you may be happy with the, with the level of service that you have now, but the level of service that the drain provides is what it's designed for. And then there well, was another question, no just one last question, and then you, I'll take questions if you don't mind. There was one uh, talking about the farmland to the east uh, being developed. We, we simply don't have, I don't have that information. Uh, that would be a, a separate discussion. So. Uh, Your Worship, I'll take uh, any questions or comments, I guess, on, on what I've uh, just submitted. Okay, any questions, uh, members of council, to, uh, to Mr. Paglia? Well, I'd like to make a comment. Go ahead. A comment on on the drain itself, I lived there for that 53 years, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that whole time, there's been no water in that drain. And, uh, you know, it, when you look at it, a lawnmower or a weed whacker will take that down and uh, down to wherever the dirt is. But there's no water in that drain. 
And as I said, maybe I got my addresses wrong when I put this together, but there are three houses south there. Um, and the fourth house is completely filled in. There's no more drain. And it's totally like that right straight through to the railroad tracks uh, uh, south or, yeah, south of, uh, of, uh, of our place. Um, and as far as, um, you know, looking at it and saying, well, it definitely needs work. If there's no water going in it from our end, uh, why is it work? Uh, Mr. Paglia states that we got surface water sitting on our land, which was one of the pictures showed. And that's true, but two days later, it's gone. It hasn't gone anywhere. It just absorbs into the ground. Um, so so to, to, to just further that through you again, your, uh, your mayor, your worship, um, water cannot infiltrate or evaporate at the rate at which you just explained. So uh, engineers take the watershed area and they design a cross section for a particular volume. Okay, so the water 0.458 hectares of your land is in the watershed of the sear drain. Uh, it doesn't magically disappear. It goes to the CYR drain and you are assessed for the maintenance and repair of that water. Uh, alternatively, if, if, if council would like to, I mean, not at this meeting is to discuss the, the assessment or the fairness of the assessment schedules, but I'm sure uh, we would entertain. If you wanted to be removed, there would have to be proof that your water does not make to the CYR. And adversely, you would be on the hook to produce a report for the Tecumseh Road drain because no one can disconnect or connect to a municipal drain without council's approval. So you are in the 1969 report, you are in the 1992 report, and you are currently in the 2021 report. To simply say that you do not use a CYR drain is not good enough. Also used it. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, I, 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 I had a couple questions, but Sam, you, you kind of answered those for me. Um, you know, if, if, uh, uh, Mr. McDonald were to petition to be removed, um, you know, his property would still drain to somewhere. And if it's not here, it could be in the, the, uh, uh, document I'm looking at is this sear drain and I don't have all the others around, but eventually that water would go to, you know, another drain. So the engineer would, um, uh, uh, you know, redraw his property to, um, to, to another drain and, and, you know, his apportionment would move from this one to another one. So Correct. you, you kind of answered all my questions that I had. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any further questions or comments? Councilor Dowie. Thank you, Worship. Through you to uh, the train superintendent. Um, thank you for your comments, uh, Sam. And uh, just being long-term, uh, is there is there a prospect of a say a, the develop like if there's land development in this area, what would the fate of the sear drain be? Would it be conversion to a storm sewer or would it always remain as an enclosed drain? Uh, just wondering if you you might have a a lens on that. Yeah, thank you, uh, Councillor Dowie. Through your worship. Uh, I guess it depends on the development. If they if they certainly have the option to maintain the sear drain and use it, uh, although they would likely be restricted to uh, through their stormwater management plan for flows, could be, as uh, the sear is drained at a uh, or sorry designed at a certain capacity, and they wouldn't be able to exceed the capacity of what they were contributing to the sear drain now. If the development proposes an enclosure of the sear drain, then they would be required to appoint, uh, to have council appoint an engineer under section 78 of that, of the act, uh, like they did in 1992, uh, and uh, produce a report for those developments and likely be assessed for any changes to the sear drain. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions? Yeah. Can I uh, can I ask another question uh, dealing with the contributors to this drain? 
are the Subaru, Hyundai, and the different uh, parts of the plaza uh, contributing to this drain? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, through you, Your Worship, uh, Mr. McDonald, on the assessment schedule, uh, every property owner that is paying into this drain is listed with the amount uh, uh, an, uh, the engineer has used a, an arbitrary amount of fifteen thousand uh, dollars to divide amongst all of the users of the drain as to how much each one pays. There are three categories: special benefit, benefit, and outlet. But those are the estimated uh, payments that the town uses as a, a recovery mechanism to recover costs based on fifteen thousand. So it's important to note that what we're actually adopting today is not the $15,000, we're adopting the ratio. So I believe your property was assessed $221 over $15,000 uh, arbitrary amount in the schedule. So it's important to realize for every $15,000 that the town spends in maintenance and repair, your invoice will be reflected in the amount of $221. It's like a blank check, eh? <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Henderson. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you, I just would like to add a, a couple comments. Um, with regard to the Subaru dealership, um, they did a, an stormwater management study and are storing substantial amounts of water on their property and releasing at a reduced rate to ensure that they don't adversely impact the sear drain. Um, I think one of the things that has to be kept in mind, uh, Mr. Paglia mentioned it, this is the legal outlet for the rear yards of these properties. Without that legal outlet, they have no right to drain their water down to County Road uh, 22. Um, the other important thing to note is, is that Mr. McDonald's property is right at the upper end of this drain. And while his contribution to the drain may not seem that important in his, in his mind, it ultimately goes downstream. And that drain is supposed to have a, a certain level of service that it provides to everybody else. And as you go downstream, more and more water is, is draining into that system. And if that system is not cleaned out and at the proper depths, there's potential for problems downstream. So um, it, it is a legal outlet, it's under bylaw. And as uh, Mr. Paglia mentioned, the town is obligated to ensure that we keep that drain in, in a proper state of repair. Okay, I understand. Well, I understand. Yeah, and, and I, I just want to add, the Drainage Act is a very powerful document. And um, for us, um, the joint and several liability, in particular uh, in these days, uh, it's really, um, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're increasing your risk. And um, so it, it, the act is there, and, and you know, uh, to protect not only uh, you know, the, the municipality, but each individual as well on, on, uh, on the, their individual properties. Okay, any further questions or comments? Hearing none. Okay, I want to thank you, Mr. McDonald, uh, for uh, your, um, your involvement in the meeting today. And uh, if I uh, can indulge counsel to... Um, on, on the communications item one, two, six, I've got a motion to receive uh, the correspondence. Thank you. Councilor Joe Van and it's supported by Councilor Houston. All in favor? <coughs> Opposed, if any, that is carried. Correction, maybe you want to note the correction of the house. Okay, if there's. Uh, Sorry, no more uh, you know business to be had here this evening on this particular meeting. Then a motion uh, to adjourn, uh, and that there be no no further business on Tuesday, November 9th, twenty twenty one. Meeting of court revision be adjourned at seven forty. Moved by Deputy Mayor Bicetti, supported by Councilor Dowie. All in favor? Opposed? If any, that is carried.